we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for your presence tonight, and we know that by vindication we saw it ourselves that all things were possible. We know all things are still possible because of your presence. And But, Lord, we know the great possibility of this hour is the transforming power of the shout. The word that was delivered to us, vindicated, proven to be the very word of God which for which we thank you, that you, pre perfect, you perfectly and by your presence delivered, showed it to us, and we're very, very grateful. Now, Father, may we uh, not only believe to the extent that uh, what we have believed in the past, but may our faith be increased, Lord, at this hour in the truth of the true doctrine, and then meeting issue with that doctrine by stepping out into life, believing that we're part of that great word of this hour, the great bride of Jesus Christ. Bless everyone, Lord, in divine presence. <clears throat> may there not be one sick one amongst us, we pray, Lord, but that sweet spirit of Christ that's in that word and in this place, Lord, heal the sick because... The prophet told us, and we tried to obey it, to take this message for a healing. Heal our souls, our minds, our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray, man. You may be seated. Now, we're at number seven in this message of Shalom. And since having finished commenting on Brother Branham's opening remarks, <clears throat> and having also started on the actual message itself, Shalom, which, of course, was based on the scripture of Isaiah 60 and Psalm 62. We have already discovered that this sermon follows the pattern of the majority, if not all, of Brother Branham's messages. And that pattern is to bring forth doctrine and conduct, or passive faith and active faith, based on vindication. <clears throat> and the vindication is not a matter of men understanding the infallible word as they study it. But it's a matter of God demonstrating his presence and power as the basis for the revealed word of the hour, making Rima and Logos one. And now nobody can do that outside of God vindicating his own word. Now the church has tried to do it ever since the Gnostics. We, we have fundamentalists and uh, orthodox believers, <clears throat> and they feel that if they can match Scripture or they can bring into play the ingenuity of the mind, understanding Hebrew and Greek, understanding customs, understanding many things, that this would have to be definitely the Word of God, and so therefore Logos and Rima would be one, and that's not true. The only way anybody would have even the faintest belief that Logos and Rima was one to them would be based on the fact that there was some kind of supernatural uh, vindication <clears throat> by supernatural intervention, which, of course, then would put the mind to one side completely, and the people would come to the place of where Moses prayed sincerely would God all the people of God were prophets? Do you realize that the fact that you have a vindicated message put you in the prophetic class? It's a tremendous thing that we have seen in our day. <clears throat> Man's understanding is bypassed entirely as God rivets man's attention by manifestation in order to attract to and teach him the truth. <clears throat> in other words, Vindication, which we call vindication, is a manifestation which is to attract the attention to the people to the truth. The great Holy Spirit is here personally to reveal the truth as he was once 2,000 years ago when he brought the truth to the Apostle Paul. To see this perfectly as pertaining to this message, Shalom, <clears throat> we'll simply go to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Verses 5 to 7, and we will read. Let your moderation be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes understanding, 
shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this lets you know here, <clears throat> as Paul has already told us in 1 Corinthians 2, that God bypasses the human mind, this peace that Brother Branham is speaking of for 1964 and con also for consecutive years does not come by an understanding of the human mind. Although the human mind will be an instrument that God uses as a receptacle, but it will not be the originator or the discerner in itself of any truth of the Word of God. It's going to be based upon a supernatural revelation. <clears throat> now, with that also, <clears throat> we notice, as I've said here, uh, looking at verse 7 again, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, you could say bypasses the understanding perfectly and entirely, and is completely a revelation. <clears throat> we can hook up or link up to Galatians, the fifth chapter, 5 and 22, to prove our point. And I said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, good gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Notice it says the fruit of the Spirit is peace. <clears throat> so therefore, this peace is generated by the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the conduit of the Holy Spirit? It is not simply word. It is revealed word. Because you could be so clever and you could be so understanding as to memorize every verse of Scripture and say this is going to do it and it won't do it, it'll bring greater and breed more horrible confusion than ever because now you know a whole lot more and don't know what to do with it. It's just like having a whole lot of sand on your front yard and somebody comes by and says, well, that fella must like sand, so I'll dump three more truckloads on. If you didn't know what to do with the first truckload, how are you going to handle the three? Well, that's what we're looking at here. So what are we trying to tell you? We're trying to tell you, Brother Branham's sermons never fail to bring across the vindicated word, which is the conduit of the Holy Ghost, which is the energizer, which brings forth his energies. <clears throat> so we're seeing Brother Branham is running true to form. Thus we see again the revealed word. Revealed by vindication is the conduit of the Holy Spirit. And from there, the Holy Spirit brings us his own peace, the same as he brings us his own love. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give unto you. Now, the world can take the word of God. His brother Brown said, any man's hand can open this book. But he said, only the Holy Spirit can truly open and reveal. <clears throat> so, you see, we are cutting ourselves down to where I don't know any other church has ever cut itself down. And I've been preaching for a long, long time now. Just about 50 solid years. <clears throat> Looking at all these things and all the theologians, they do not understand what we are trying to see tonight. So the Holy Spirit brings us his own peace. So let us ingest very carefully what Brother Branham said, going back to Isaiah chapter 60 and a couple of verses there. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. <clears throat> All right. So we're seeing here what Brother Branham is setting forth in this scripture. He is talking about a light rising upon the people and darkness arising upon the people. <clears throat> With that in mind, let's go back to Galatians, the same chapter beginning in verse 17. For the, for, the, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. You've got a war on. And these are contrary one to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. So what you're seeing here is that the Holy Spirit is attempting to bring the word to the people, and the spirit of man is attempting to get away from the word. <coughs> See, now let's keep reading. <laughs> if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest that are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I told you in the past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> now, the fruit of the Spirit, and you automatically must link the Spirit of God with the human mind, because it tells you, though, 
The human mind cannot produce the revelation that God requires, yet the human mind is necessary as a receptacle for the revelation. <clears throat> so, all right, you're looking at here what the Spirit can do through the Word. Up here is what the Spirit cannot do because there is no Word. Up here is what human spirit does in the flesh because it has not got truly revealed Word. Now, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and so on. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is the parallelism of Scripture. As Brother, as, as Brother Branham brought us the text, there is light arising upon the people. There is gross darkness arising upon the people. And at the end time then, the path of the righteous shining more and more to the perfect day, more and more perfection must come even though to fewer people, but even then grosser grossness must come at the end time. <clears throat> you see, so we can see here how Brother Branham has brought us this truth so carefully, showing us vindicated word is the basis. Now let's go back again and see the book of Romans, <clears throat> the first chapter, beginning at verse 16. And we cannot give it enough attention to the scripture, although I guess we read them many, many times. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All right, so therefore the gospel, which is the word, the good tidings, <clears throat> has everything to do with faith, and faith is a revelation. So now we have the Holy Spirit and the word together, converting the sinner and bringing that man into the place where God wants him. Now watch, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against everything that turns down the gospel. You say, Brother Avail, you're putting something in there. Yeah, come on, read your Bible. He tells you up here that the gospel is a power of God to salvation, and he says the wrath of God is against all and God is in righteousness, so therefore the gospel alone has righteousness and godliness in it, and anything else doesn't have it. And one word off is not the gospel. And that takes a revelation. <clears throat> and the revelation had better be by vindication or you don't know where you're standing. Now, this is at the end time because you can neither add nor take away at the end time. That's the book of Revelation. And you're coming right to the tree of life, one word, and the tree of life vanished. We'll be seeing that shortly from this message. Don't worry. <clears throat> Everything is in here. Now, because that which may be known that God is manifest in... Oh, all right, now. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who, what did they do? <clears throat> they turn it down, they hold it down, which means they substitute a perversion. Now, <clears throat> the word of righteousness in the day of Adam was this. After so many years in the condition you're in, having obeyed me, multiplying, replenishing the earth and so on, you will then turn into immortal people. See, and they turned it down. Now, what destroyed immor immortality? One word, off. And how are you going to get it back? Now, the people say, well, by this lovely revival, by this great thing and this and that. I'm going to tell you something. They must be insane. We are not insane. We have the mind of God. Now, they hold down the truth and unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. <clears throat> In other words, they were able to see it and all. For in the visible things of him from Christ's world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. They are without excuse, because when they knew God, they glorified him not of God, neither were thankful, came vain their, their reasonings. Foolish heart was dark, and professed themselves to be wise, Gnostics, they became fools, changed the glory of the uncorrupted God in the image, made like corrupt man, birds, and so on. That's really abysmal. Wherefore, God gave them to uncleanness, to the lust of their own hearts, and so on and so on, right down the line. <clears throat> so you can see here, what turning down the Word of God does. Now, if you don't think they've done the same thing in our day, you're abysmally wrong. Because here's what our day says here. It says they changed the truth of God into a lie, worship the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. See? And for this God, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change their natural use, and that was against nature. Brother Brandon talks of that in this sermon, kind of veils it. Likewise, men leaving the natural use of women, bear it, burn themselves, lust, in lust toward one another. Men with men working that which is unseemly, receiving the salary of recompense which is meat, and so on, right down the line. <clears throat> they go right to the place <clears throat> where 
it says here, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. If that isn't homosexuality, I'll eat it. Because the whole thing's on homosexuality. <coughs> the condition the world's in, see? <clears throat> now, let's look at Isaiah chapter 57, 15 to 21. Now, what I'm doing, I'm backgrounding for this message because we're going to hit the message tonight as Brother Branham starts it. Uh, 57, and we're looking at, at verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also to a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit shall fail before me, <clears throat> and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of the covetousness was I wroth, of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me and was wroth. He went on forwardly in the way of his heart, and he went his own way. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also, restore comforts unto him to his, to his mourners. <clears throat> I create the fruit of the lips. Now peace, peace to him that's afar off, and him that's near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. But watch, the wicked are like the trouble seen that cannot rest, whose waters are cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Then what about the righteous? Categorically, the true gospel, which has was vindicated, brings a peace. And this is how we have the God of peace in our midst to bring us a peace. <clears throat> now, let's look at verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that's afar off. And to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Now, that tells you there a promise at the end time is to the Jew and the Gentile. Because that which was near is the Jew, and that which is afar off was the Gentile. Now, let's go back to the very last book of the Old Testament. <clears throat> I create the fruit of the lips. <clears throat> Malachi 3.16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. And they should be mine, said the Lord, a host of damn make my jewels. That's the bride. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. Then shall you return near and far off, discern between righteousness and wickedness, between him that serves God and him that serves not. Now, I hope you caught what I was saying here. In verse 16, the talking of the revealed word at the end time will bring the peace of God into the lives of people. <clears throat> because there's only one thing can do it, and that's the Holy Spirit, and he's only got one conduit. And you can try every measure you want and go every way you want, but as I read the word of God tonight, there is no way you will get the true thing. You can get a counterfeit, but you cannot get the real peace of God. Notice also since Hebrews 13 and 8 holds, a, holds true as Alpha and Omega, <clears throat> we ought to consider Ephesians chapter 2, 14 to 22. For he is our peace, who hath, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make himself between one new man, so making peace that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you that were far off, and to them that were nigh, for through him we both have access <clears throat> by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, and fellow, but, for, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Remember, Brother Branham said over there in the seals in the ages concerning I'll uh, make him a pillar as a part of the foundation, the very foundation, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone or corner, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into the holy temple of the Lord, in whom you're also, you're also built together as an habitation of God through the Spirit. <clears throat> so there we find at the end time, according to this scripture, an omega situation, an alpha, omega situation, uh, look at the verses 15 and 16, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself between one new man, so making peace. Now, in other words, the enmity lay in the fact that man could not do according to any word, even under the best conditions, which was in the Garden of Eden, they gave in everything to a small time of pleasure. 
sold right out. <clears throat> there is no way, even under the best conditions, that man can ever of himself live up to that word. He can't do it. <clears throat> so therefore, God comes by his own way, gives a revelation. That word becomes a conduit. The life of the Holy Spirit begins to work through the individual. All right. Reconciliation has been made. That he might, re that he might reconcile, no, he said in himself, uh, for to make in himself of twain <clears throat> one new man, so making peace. So we find what we're looking at here is the peace of God. Now, watch what I have in mind, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Now, <clears throat> what happened in the beginning? God and man split asunder, and there had to be a reconciliation. And in the Garden of Eden, there could not be a reconciliation. All there could be was an atonement where somewhere down the road, something could work out to put man where God wanted him, which was immortality. 6,000 years down the road, we have come to immortality. That means we have come to perfect reconciliation where God says, I will now let a man in his present condition, see, come to the very tree of life <coughs> and live forever. But of course, the condition changes because of the power of the life of the truly revealed word in a bride who takes the word of God, knows what to do with it, and doesn't leave it. I've been, I've been preaching all along here now and last recently more than ever, especially down in Beaumont, that you have a vindicated word and you don't need to stand in anything else but the understanding of vindication. So what we're looking at today is we're right back to Eden. We are right back to reconciliation. In other words, let's face it, what Calvary bought and paid for was not dispensed at one time, it was dispensed to two, it was actually dispensed by bringing up those who look forward to it and is being dispensed today. And the last point <clears throat> is a reconciliation, not simply an atonement. Now, atonement is wonderful. Thank God for the atonement. There couldn't be reconciliation without it. But you got to remember, <clears throat> we are now at the end time reconciled. Notice Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, <clears throat> come on out and sup with me and I with him. That is a perfect reconciliation because it doesn't tell of a future departing. That speaks of the hour of John 14 when he said, I'm going to go away, but don't worry, in my father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. But he said, I'm going away, and the place is prepared for you. And when I come, that next time, we will never, never part. <clears throat> this is reconciliation. Reconciled to a bride that fell, fell away. And the appearing, and the appearing over in Matthew 25, the, the, the shout comes, Behold the bridegroom, not cometh. Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And those that came out to meet him were twofold a wise and a foolish. <clears throat> but one had the conduit, which had the word for the Holy Spirit. Like he said to those Pharisees, you can't have the word because there's no place in you for the word. Consequently, they could never have the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit could not fall upon that seed because there was no seed there to bring it to life. So you see what you're looking at here. You're looking at the very end time. All right, so here we, we, here we see where we are going into this message that Brother Branham preached on Shalom. It is a vindicated peace for the conduit of the Holy Spirit peace, which we have tonight, is based on vindication. <clears throat> Today it is peace with God and peace of God, entering into millennial rest and thence to the new Jerusalem rest. <clears throat> vindication says it's all here now, fully exposed, fully operational, changing our mortal frames and all frames of the entire universe, all going back to original harmony of God and beyond the original, 
because the original was not the consummate plan. Uh, uh, immortality was. <clears throat> now we're into process. <clears throat> so we see this going on now by vindicated revealed word. Now remember Brother Branham was telling this to us on page 37, I beg your pardon, paragraph 37, <clears throat> on page 7. Now with the understanding background, you got what you're looking for in this message, <clears throat> which was Brother Branham preaching a vindicated word, and from this word, there has to be a constant manifestation. Now it's not a manipulation, it's a manifestation. Paul the Apostle said, I never manipulated anyone. I never manipulated the word. I laid it out there by vindication, proving the power of God. Now he said, let it go to work and bring us right to the place of transformation, transfiguration. <clears throat> we're in that hour right now. And some of the things we're getting out is like number one was love. I preached on that many a sermon, and I know that the brethren would literally hate me for preaching it. I almost hated myself because it sounded like I was, I was trying to duck an issue, trying to destroy something that God had for us, this love, you know. But I'm going to tell you, the Bible said the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, and there's only one conduit for the Holy Ghost. That's the word. So therefore, brother, sister, if a man hasn't got that, he hasn't got the genuine, true love of God. His brother Branham said compassion is doing the will of God. And what is the will of God? It's got to be revealed word. It cannot be word because that can be misdirected and misdivided word like Cain had. He said, you offered well. But if you have not rightly divided, have you not sinned? In other words, doing God a service, as Brother Branham preached, was an absolute sin in the face of Almighty God. It was an insult to God without a revealed word. Now, where does it leave the world? You tell me. <clears throat> See, listen, you think I'm fired up? I'm not fired up. Just standing here, plain, natural, normal. I know what I'm talking about. Of course, you help me. It's all right. Okay. Paragraph 37. David speaking here. God is our rock. Now watch what Brother Branham says. God is our rock when God has been revealed to us. <clears throat> He's not your rock if he hasn't been revealed. Well, say, bless God, the world says, the word says so-and-so. And then one person's got one God. One person's got two gods. <clears throat> One's got three gods. God knows how many gods they got to know him. <clears throat> All right. Let's find out if you got a rock tonight. Ephesians 1, 17, Paul praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Now there's the real God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now who is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, I'd like to know. <clears throat> well, they say there's three of them. Well, that's if Jesus is God, he, how, could, how could God, the Father be his God? <clears throat> Do they take turns worshiping each other? Ah, you didn't worship me this time. It's my turn now. Well, let's put our names in a hat. See who gets worshiped first. Yes, I make fun of these things. You bet I do. Sarcastically, I make fun of them because they deserve nothing but contempt. Yeah. Listen to what it says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, Tells you there's a Jesus Christ, he's got a Father, and he's God. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Now, let me tell you something. If you haven't got that rock in the last hour that precedes the resurrection, because the resurrection comes right after this rapture, you haven't got a rock. <clears throat> you have got sinking sand. And you're not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. Oh, you got to, listen, you got to get down to live or die, sink or swim. This is it. You got to become an identified cult. You got to become a heretic, according to the way you worship. <clears throat> See? Now he said, God is our rock, only on condition that God is revealed to us. Now what about if it's, what if it's a wrong revelation? <clears throat> what if you end up like Homini and his gang of cutthroats, the Iranians, and all those illegitimates, they were fostered by Abraham listening to his wife. <clears throat> that shows you where the woman takes you. She represents the church. 
Oh, she can produce all right. You talk about the mule producing, she'll have produced the mule. <clears throat> and not work them. That's that world church. I want sisters getting mad at me, but I'm going to tell you one thing. The men type certain things and women type certain things. And don't think I'm pushing on you tonight. But if I take a crack at the female sex on the ground of a type, because let's face it, the Antichrist is a man. And the devil takes full control of him. <clears throat> so we're not hitting the sexes. We're hitting the fact of what's what. See, we got to look at the picture. So God is only a rock when he's revealed. And that had better be the right revelation. Now, Brother Branham starts on his sermon. <clears throat> 30, paragraph 38. Now, my text for this morning is an odd word, shalom. Shalom in the Hebrew means peace. And that's what I say to the church this morning, shalom, that's peace. Now, he makes a little statement here as though Brother Branham would like to impress you with the fact that he knows different languages. I've seen him look down in the audience after seeing a man 25 years back, maybe seen him once a year, so-and-so and so-and-so. Now, why do you think Brother Branham talks about Finland? In Finnish, it's called Jamalan Raha, which means God's peace. The Raha would have to mean, of course, I'm sure God. Jamalan, I think, would mean the peace part. I don't know. <clears throat> God's peace upon you. Raha, God. See, God's peace, shalom. Why would he say that? Well, I'm not positive, but I do know that Brother Branham said, Switzerland, why did you... Uh, how do you put that? Reject me. And was it not Finland he said the same thing about, or was it Norway? <clears throat> Let me tell you about the Finns and why he literally said this. I was over there in 1970, <clears throat> and the Finns came into Norway where we had the camp meeting. And because I dared to preach about a vindicated prophet, they called an early morning prayer meeting and literally asked God to kill me because I dared to say something other than, oh, great God and hallelujah, Jesus. You should go to Finland now and see what they got. They took Awal Frank, hook, line, and sinker, a whoremonger, who put himself above Brother Branham. Talk to people to go there now and they'll say how illegitimate it was. Did they miss the peace of God? You bet they did. Let me tell you something. Awal Frank can tell you that the pillar of fire will return to Europe. Awal Frank is a liar. And with his doctor's degree, he's a bigger liar than ever. You might not like the way I preach. I care two bits what you think. The same God who gives me strength to open my mouth will give me strength to keep my mouth open and the backbone to match it if I'm a child of God. <clears throat> yeah, he said, Switzerland, why did you turn me down? Those are the words. Norway turned him down. He couldn't even pray for the sick. Where are the proud Swedes? Where is Europe? Where is Finland? Well, let's be honest. <clears throat> they come from the east and west. There may be a few there. But as far as the nation's concerned, <clears throat> they turned it down. He says here, Shalom, God's peace. <clears throat> you know, I like to take my time with all these things, which I know is not right in the sense of the word, but let's have my way. Let's go to John chapter 20. And let's start at verse 14. When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not it was Jesus. Mary didn't know. <clears throat> he revealed himself to her. Let's go to verse 19. We won't read all everything. It'll be too long to take all the scripture. Then the same day at evening, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus. He stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. <clears throat> 26. 
After eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. And he said to Thomas, Reach thither thy finger, behold my hands. He said, Now here's vindication. Reach thither thy hand, thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. <clears throat> Blessed are they who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, everybody likes to take this scripture. And they like to tell you that they don't have to see anything to believe because they are the world's greatest believers. Hogwash. You talk about insipid, stupid pride. <clears throat> Let's go over here to the third chapter of the book of Revelation at the very end of the age. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in to him and sup with him and he with me. <clears throat> what if the wrong man knocks on the door? I like what Brother Branham said. John turned to see the voice, to see if it was a scriptural voice. How would he know it's a scriptural voice? By vindication. Because he said, Thomas, stretch forth your hand and put it in, put your finger in the nail prints of my hand and my side. Vindication proved who it was standing there. <clears throat> now, remember, Jesus Christ prayed for those who believed his own words. They were the disciples. And he prayed for those who would believe the words of those who knew him as being disciples. Now, let's just say, <clears throat> and we don't just say we know it's true that this must be fulfilled. <clears throat> and at the end time, Christ comes knocking at the church's door. Is the church so stupid it will listen to any voice? Or will it look for a scriptural voice? Now, you know, as we get in here, he greets the elect, not the world church. The world church could be fooled because it is fooled with a Trinitarian dogma and corruption. <clears throat> but if you are going to sup with him, that shows the wedding supper. And that shows a bride of the first century who was unmarred at the time of Paul for a little while as to a false word. <clears throat> she was there as a virgin. Now, do you think for one minute that Christ will consort with a whore? Now, I tell you, I'm a funny guy and I'm one of the last breed, but thank God there's young men here today of the same breed I am. You might look at a woman, but it was touch not, handle not. I've had one, and that's all I'm interested in. They're brethren here of the same category and young preachers, which weren't before. They're men sterling in their morals. If my wife had had another man before me, I'm sorry I would have booted her out, period. I think, I, I believe I would. I'm getting a little softer now, a little milder, because we've had about 50 years together. But I tell you, except for the last maybe 10 years, she'd have been booted out regardless. As Brother Brandon said, if you married a woman alike, you could have 10 children by her. You can divorce her and marry somebody else that is a wife. Do you think for one minute if I, my integrity, which is so low, which my consorting with a woman would be actually based upon sex because that's what attracts people. Do you think that Jesus Christ would consort with some whore? Do you think he'd knock on her door and say, open up to me, <clears throat> as in the songs of Solomon, and say the beautiful things about her? Why, unless she was a virgin of the highest order, he wouldn't give her the time of day. <clears throat> How do you know it's a scriptural voice? By vindication. This is the last church age <clears throat> where they're going to sit in the throne with him, reign as a queen. <clears throat> now, let me put it this way. You can be a Mary Magdalene. You can be a, you know, Salome. Which, if you are, you're a salami, which is a bunch of horse meat cut up and put in the skin. It's the same thing. Salome, salami. 
<clears throat> Mary Magdalene, 714 devils, run right with a thousand men and be born again. No problem. But one word off, if you're no longer virgin. The Roman Catholic Church, oh, they've got it all doped up. You want to be a virgin? Well, it's okay if you pay the priest or the pope enough. He'll sprinkle holy water on you. Listen, there's a prophet by the word of God who spread, who sprinkled the holy word of God upon the people. <clears throat> they brought her back to virginity. Certainly. He wouldn't consort with some miserable prostitute and put her on the throne. Do you think Ahasuerus, the king, when his wife turned him down, what did he look for? The, he looked for the fairest, finest virgin amongst the Jewish ladies. <clears throat> She's beautiful. She proved to be a real queen. What man loves a slob? Do you think God loves slobs? Listen, we're getting to the nitty-gritty and the points here, brother, sister. God does not overlook his own principles. Not for one minute. <clears throat> it was a scriptural voice. <clears throat> and the scriptural voice spoke of peace because it said, You are the sinless, spotless, virtuous, righteous bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if that doesn't give you peace, what will? You say, well, Brother Vale, how do I know? Because the prophet was vindicated. He said, well, do I take all those things he said? Yes, you take all those things he said. Because if you're not all glorious within and without, you are not bright. So if your humility, <clears throat> which is gross pride from the devil, would say, well, Lord, I just can't believe that about myself. Ain't fit to be queen. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. Many a woman better examine what kind of a ring her boyfriend gives her because it could be paste, as they call it. Many a woman who has fabulous jewels has imitations made up of even cheaper grade zircons set nicely after the real thing. But you think for one minute that the lover of our souls, the Lord Jesus Christ, the heavenly br bridegroom, <clears throat> would give us a lot of paste? In other words, are the promises of God the pure jewels of God that are real and rich? Or is it just some junk that he makes up? In other words, can you rely upon his word? Because it's vindicated, you can't. Now, if it wasn't vindicated, you couldn't. <laughs> Look at Eliezer. <clears throat> he went down and he spoke to Rebecca and he said, Listen, little girl, I want to tell you something. I'm here for my master. He's got a lovely son and he wants to marry some girl from your household. You could be the one. In fact, I just asked God to a little special thing <clears throat> that you'd offer me water <clears throat> and even say to draw from my camels also and that's exactly what I asked God and he did it. Now I said, look, if you think I'm selling you a line, I'm just going to give you a little token here, a handful or two of what I brought you to let you know what's in my master's hand that belongs to his son if you marry him and I think you're the girl that should. <clears throat> well, do you think Eliezer gave her a line of some sort? Was it some kind of paste jewelry he gave her? Now do you think when he finally got her on the desert, he didn't take her to, to Isaac? <clears throat> and when she got to see Isaac, don't you think he was just as handsome and even much more so than the old boy said. Why, they had a love match of more than a century. <clears throat> Listen, Paul said the same thing about the ministry over here that's going to transform the bride. In the second, second Corinthians, and we read it time after, you know this is my favorite portion. You can almost tell where I'm going these days if you have a, <clears throat> you know, not like one fellow came by one day and he said, Oh, Brother Bale, I knew every scripture before you said it. Well, that's a laugh to me. <clears throat> you sit here for eight solid years and you still don't know some of the things I'm saying. So he never came in and knew that. Paul himself said, But have him, second, uh, third, uh, third chapter, second verse, but have him renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation. What could Paul possibly show them this was the truth of God, not something he could produce? Hey, listen, 
If I was younger and had the agility, some of these Pentecostal hoopla guys, <clears throat> I could get up here and demonstrate to you I've got the word of God, bless God, by kicking my feet over the pulpit. Yeah, they've done that too, and all these crazy things. That doesn't prove anything. I might be as strong as Brother Brandon said his dad was lift up 500 pounds. Or suddenly have the strength of the woman who couldn't lift the front end of the car, but she sure could because her son was under it. And she picked up 2,000 pounds and she was about 70 pounds. Something happened. Her adrenaline began to flow. Yeah, I, I might do a lot of things, but I'm going to tell you one thing. This is not what the Word of God says. If you fall for just something a man says and can't back it up, like at the beginning here, and Alpha and Omega is the same thing, <clears throat> you know you're sick. In fact, you ought to stick around. I think I've got some sky blue sock, stock I could sell you. I could buy it for a nickel and sell it to you for a dollar and a half. You'd just be, be no problem at all because I'd be very convincing. What does it matter how good you're an orator you are? Paul was not an orator. He was like exactly like Moses. <clears throat> he tripped over his tongue when it came to verbalizing. But he said, I want to tell you something. I had a vindication to commend everything I told you. Samuel stood there by vindication. When have I told you a lie? When did I take your money? When did I do so and so? And Brother Branham based not on <clears throat> prophets who brought the word like Moses, but based on prophets like Samuel who could stand there and know from God and prove it by discernment and so on. He said the same thing. When did I ever defraud you? Tell you a lie. Take your money. Do so and so. <clears throat> Never one time did the vindication ever fail. Now, there's where we stand today, brother, sister, on this peace. You say, when am I going to get this peace, brother Bill? When you and I really, 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 really understand vindication and stand with it. Yeah. <clears throat> Everybody, most people are sitting right on, right on, the, on the fence. Sit right on the fence. If anything happens, you want to just turn, flop over the other side of the fence. <clears throat> just like the, the bat, when the, when the animals were winning, uh, he said, I'm, I'm an animal. When the birds were winning the fight, he said, I'm a bird. Big fat liar is all he was. <clears throat> Bats in a dark cavern hanging upside down. Can't stand the light. I don't want to be in the bat crowd, brother, sister. I want to be there out there in the sunshine of God's grace. <clears throat> See, they turned it down. It's too bad. <clears throat> now he said, my New Year's message to the church elected in Jesus Christ. Didn't say, I'm, this is my message to the church. He said to the church, which is elected in Jesus Christ. He was defining to whom he was speaking. And he said it's for 1964. Not just church groups, but the elect, the lady of the church, Christ's bride. See, that's whom I am addressing. Now, back in 1964, Brother Branham talked to the elected group. In 1965, on Thanksgiving Day, in Invisible Union, he talked again to the elect lady. And I'm going to tell you, the man didn't pull his punches. He stood right there and he said, Now, you people talking in Jack Moore's church, you let them know plump and plain that they didn't believe. <clears throat> but they could if they wanted to. But he's speaking to the bride that came to that meeting and filled the church up and on the, and on the telephone that Brother Perry Green had put in. <clears throat> Got the hookups. <clears throat> now, in November 65, he spoke to the same in Invisible Union. Now, in this message, it is peace to the bride that Brother Branham is saying, and it is a salutation for 1964. In 1965, it is a thanksgiving for a union of that same bride <clears throat> with the Word. See? Not just peace with God, but the peace of God. <clears throat> because the bride had turned back to being a virgin of the Word according to 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and verse 2. And now that bride is in Matthew 25, and she goes out to meet him, and therein she recognizes him. And in that meeting, she recognizes a shout, which is the message. <clears throat> now watch what happens <clears throat> in 2 Thessalonians, not first now, 
But in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, <clears throat> and in verse 13, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. That's the elect lady through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. And I want to say that word K in there can be used as a preposition, as same as a conjunction, which would then read, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit, even belief of the truth. <clears throat> How is the spirit of God going to do any sanctifying apart from the word? Can't do it, brother, sister. <clears throat> There's no way. Now, Brother Branham goes on in paragraph 41. We are facing here in our two scripture readings a contrast one to the other. And Isaiah says, Rise and shine, for the glory of God has come upon you. The light is here. And then the very next verse, he says, Gross darkness is upon the people, this people. <clears throat> now, and now that we are in this period of a mixture of light and darkness, then my address to the church at this particular period of light and darkness is shalom, peace. Let's find out what it's all about, see? We're facing this year with both darkness and light. The world is in one of the most chaotic times of darkness that it's ever stood in. And yet again, it's standing in the most blessed light <clears throat> that did ever shine. What you got here <clears throat> is the two binds coming up. You have got the church in contradistinction <clears throat> to the world image, which was from the head down with Nebuchadnezzar to the filth of the Roman Empire, which was revived under Catholicism, <clears throat> making it a religious empire. Now, with the bride, it's from the feet up. <clears throat> In other words, it narrows and narrows to the place of headship. So what you have then, a bride approaching the headship of God, and you have the world approaching the complete headship of the enemy. They're growing side by side. <clears throat> so, there is a light that shines at the end time that is the brightest light that ever shone in church history, and there is a darkness that spells a chaos as there never was chaos in these 2,000 years, and I believe ever since the world began. <clears throat> in other words, there's a coming to the top. <clears throat> now, Notice Brother Branham said, the world is in one of the most chaotic times of darkness that it's ever stood in. And yet again, one of the times of most blessed light. Now in this chaos, the bride is involved in the chaos, but will not remain a part of it. We go back to Luke, the first chapter, <clears throat> and notice in verse 17, the time of Elijah, which was John the Baptist number three, and he shall go before him, as be now, let's read number 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Now notice that. <clears throat> God is their Lord, but they have turned from him. So therefore, it took a man to come on the scene to turn the people to their God, which they said they were worshiping. Now something was very wrong because they weren't turned to God. And he shall go before the Lord God of Israel in <clears throat> the spirit and power of Elijah <clears throat> to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, even the disobedient, that's the ignorant and the ones who don't understand because they don't have the wisdom required of them. But they will get the wisdom of the just one. Through this man, they will acquire an understanding and understanding disperses chaos. In other words, light will disperse darkness. 
Because the Bible said John the Baptist was a bright and shining light, but he was not that light. <clears throat> but he was a light to the light. Therefore, if a man claims to know the light of the world, which is Jesus, he had to have a previous light of some description pointing to it. You say what you want, but that's the Word of God. Because the Bible distinctly says, the light of this hour is going to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. <clears throat> now, what does it turn the heart mean? It means even the disobedient. Those that don't have an understanding, this is not willful disobedience. This is the product of the hour, which is chaos coming out of darkness. Every table full of vomit. The book closed. <clears throat> and this book has been closed in a certain area under the seven seals. Now notice what it says. Even the disobedient to the wisdom of just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. <clears throat> it tells you right there that they do not know God as they ought to know God. They're the people of God. They're the children of God, but they are far from God in their understanding, and that's what the Bible teaches. My people perish for lack of knowledge. <clears throat> they are not knowledgeable in that which is of that hour. They didn't have to know what was back of them. They didn't have to know what was ahead of them. All they had to know was in that hour. That's Alpha. What about this hour? They have to know. There has to be an understanding. <clears throat> now, the understanding does not come by men opening the book and reading and making comparison and think they can draw conclusions. You've got to take it to where Alpha is. And Alpha sent a man <clears throat> to go before the Lord God to give an understanding. If William Branham didn't do that, I want to ask you who's going to do it. Oh, they say, well, bless God, it just worked out that Bill Branham happened beyond the scene, and you bunch of idiots, you know, you took it to be, he'll point you to the light, you know. Well, hallelujah, I'm glad you say that. Because I don't think my ark could hold that number of people. <coughs> I'm not mean, just tell you the truth. You give me one reason why I should applaud what God hates. <coughs> Give me one reason that I should stand what God will not stand. You give me one reason that I should not take my side with a vindicated prophet of God, a vindicated message, God himself coming down and doing it. You know what I'll tell you? You and I don't mix, honey. You get yourself another preacher, another church, read it for your own good, because the more you sit here, there's going to be greater condemnation because I'm going to just keep pouring it on. And keep pouring it on. You say, oh, that veil, he preached 24 sermons on one certain thing. I said, I'm, but that guy's a liar. Preached 48. If he had hot tax in his shoes back there, what kind of hot tax he got then? But he's the guy that made Brother Branham a liar. <clears throat> that man told a lie, Brother, says, you and I are in trouble. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, whatever's behind him's in trouble because the same thing is in the word in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, all this, whatever God's there, <clears throat> I've never seen him. But I've seen his manifestation, what he can do. That God doesn't lie. Nowhere near sheep and form, but won't we see? Chaotic times of darkness. Now, the difference is just like it was in the beginning when there was gross darkness upon the earth. Well, was there gross darkness on the earth? It was on the water. The water covered the earth. The people cover the world today. God cleaned the world up. They say they had about 5 billion people back in the days of Noah. I don't know. They didn't have all the, the water masses they got today. We got the land mass. <clears throat> Before it's over, how many billion there be? I don't know. We're up to six, close to 6 billion now, I guess. Seven makes some kind of perfection. Who knows? Darkness is upon the face of the deep. Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. He said, let there be light. And God separated light from, and the, from the darkness. And I believe we're now living in that hour again. What hour? The hour that light and darkness are separated. <clears throat> in other words, it's no longer chaotic because truth is vindicated as truth and therefore anything else is error. No big problem. No big problem. 
God separated light from darkness, and he's pressing it to the other side of the world and the, that the light might be made manifest. All right? <clears throat> the Bible teaches that when God set the lights in order, the ground itself began to produce because the seed was there. <clears throat> Two kinds of seeds, different kinds of seeds. So it is in this hour. When the light struck the masses of people, the good seed was already there and the wrong seed was already there and there weren't too many good seed and the good seed had to respond to the light. <clears throat> and so did the evil seed respond to the light. But look what they, brought, they both, brought, both brought forth. <clears throat> One brought forth the Korah, Dathan, and Abiram's of Pentecost and the other brought forth a Christian people who were content to place their whole lives in a passive faith, which is the doctrine of Almighty God, which is the true word. Then see whatever comes out of it. Because Brother Branham said the bride will have the word and know what to do with it, or she'll keep quiet, <clears throat> which means she won't try to manifest anything. She won't try to do anything. <clears throat> she knows she's got that word. And, me, and coming more and more, in, not just in contact with the Word, but more in harmony and communion with that Word. <clears throat> the bride will be a Word bride, which Brother Branham said she already is because he said God is piling Word upon Word. And he said the same. He said if God starts making an animal, he doesn't take a cat cell and throw in a dog cell and a chicken cell. Neither does he take a bride and throw in any cell, but Word by Word by Word. <clears throat> if he's Word, we got to be Word. See? Okay, the seeds were already there. This is what brought forth, brings forth Matthew 24. <clears throat> now, this is a time of the chaotic darkness upon the world <clears throat> because there's light and darkness. It would, listen, one or the other wouldn't breed chaos. But you put them together, there's chaos. Look, if all you ever knew was a black piece of cloth and no one ever heard of a brown suit, there wouldn't be any trouble. You'd be like Henry Ford. He said, paint all the cars any color you want, long as it's black. That's it. <clears throat> Amish Mennonites, the same thing. Of course, they go a little haywire, then they try to buy the finest cloth with the pretty silkier threads. That was explained to me by... Former Mennonite lady said, she said, don't ever sell them short on their pride. She's their proud as all get out. She watched them and look at the finest cloth, you know. <clears throat> but I look at put it in an illustration what I just said, though. If there was no light, how can you have a chaos? If there's no darkness, how can you have a chaos? It's when the thing is mixed, which way you're going to go? Well, according to Brother Branham, the light shines so great in the last day that you don't have a doubt. Why? Because the glory of the Lord comes upon you. And then as you talk the word, <clears throat> the peace of God fills you. And you just keep on moving as jewels in his crown. Now that's what I'm looking at, brother, sister. I've got to look at it that way because that's the way it was in the garden until man got off the word. He'd have just gone on and on and on. <clears throat> now we're back on the word. We're not going to ever leave it. Brother Branham said so. Are we talking about Matthew here, didn't we? 24th chapter. All right. About the false prophets arising, all of these things in here. And then in verse 40, Brother Branham said, Two be in the field, one taken, one left. They're out there working. Or are they being separated by the word? Over in Luke 17. <clears throat> one taken, one left. That's the actual rapture. There has to be a separation. Why, you know in the days of chaos way back there, it says the, <clears throat> that, that's, the, that's what the actual word is. <clears throat> and um, darkness upon the face of the deep, like an abyss. It was chaotic. See? But just, but then God began to separate. <clears throat> how did he do it? Did it by the word. And he's still doing it today. Notice how gifts are bringing people back together. 
<clears throat> doing a great job. But the Word of God is separating us. And the Word of God is pressing. That's a good terminology. It's an actual pressing. It's like it was back there in the land of Egypt. Goshen, there was plenty of light. But in Egypt, there was total darkness. In Goshen with Israel, they didn't lose one firstborn. In, 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 in Egypt, they lost them all. <clears throat> Only the crossover. There weren't anybody drowning in the Red Sea. All the Egyptians are saying to do so got drowned. But I'm going to tell you something. When it came to the final going in to the, to the garden which God had prepared, you know, the land of Israel, Canaan land, only the very elect went in. See why? The word had separated them. God said, go in and take the land you can do it. And they stood back and they said, we can't do it. Josh and Ketty said, bless God, we can more than take that land and ten more just like it. Come on, let's get moving. <clears throat> God let them all die off. <clears throat> because they didn't believe. They didn't believe in vindication. <clears throat> now listen, let me show you how serious vindication is. The showdown with Moses in Egypt proved God. Crossing of the Red Sea proved God. The bread from heaven proved God. Everything proved God. And they still stood back and bellyached. They would not take the vindication. Oh, how people hate vindication. Well, bless God, if that's it, then I'm left out. Well, shut up, you fool, and get in. Oh, they'd sooner go down like the prodigal son and eat with the pigs. You know, he got so low, he even ate what the pigs left. That old farmer was too smart to give him the kernel, so he took the kernel out of the husk and gave the idiot the, the husk. Any prodigal sons here tonight? Start with vindication, bless God. Say, hey, I'm not so smart. People simply can't take it. They can't take vindication, but they'll read every book and say, well, the scholars said so. I get a phone call every now and then from a certain guy. You, some of you met him. <clears throat> he lets me know, you know, the proof it doesn't mean what I said, yet the finest Greek students say so. But, oh, he's got his stooges all lined up. What I say trouble with you is you just don't believe Brother Brown's vindicated, and I do. But I said, you go your way, and I go mine. <clears throat> That's right. He's just about half my age, but he thinks maybe his 30-some, 40 years is smarter than my 70-some. I got news for him. I've been where he's never been. He ain't never going to get there either. <clears throat> I'm not boasting, just telling you the truth. I've seen things in my own ministry he could just hope and pray for, but never ever. I've seen miracles, brothers. The first time I prayed for sick, I asked God for a miracle. That woman had great big, she died full of diabetes, her leg just like this. And so I just took upon myself to command the leg to go down in the name of Jesus. And I saw a go, chump, and the leg was normal. She said, well, that's great for a start. He hadn't even come near that. What does he know about God opening a book and reading some scholar? So I believe in one God. So does the devil. Amen. At least he's got the brains to tremble. I'm going to tell you something. That devil believes in one God, and he knows one God is a whole lot tougher than three gods or 400 gods. That's why he sells Trinitarianism. Because when you deal with one God, you've got one mind going one way, and look out if his mind's ever against you. But praise God, if your mind's with his mind, you don't have to worry anymore. There's only one God. Where'd they get this idea? There's two, three gods. I don't know. <clears throat> Gross darkness. But Goshen was light. Now to the church, the reason I say shalom to them is because that's, because it's God's peace. That's what I want to bring you this morning for the new year. See, now listen, God's peace. Okay. <clears throat> The rock revealed. God revealed is something to stand on, and you are now placed. Let's go to Colossians, the third chapter, and I'm going to quit. <clears throat> I'm meaning to quit for a long time, but I want to be able to preach tomorrow morning. I was like preaching like this. You might not want to come anyway, but that's all right. I'll be here with a few of my buddies. <clears throat> we'll look at the Word of God just in case some beautiful thing comes out, which always does. <clears throat> Verse 12, third chapter, Colossians, put on therefore of the elect of God, holy beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, if Christ forgave you, do so you also. Above all, 
of these things, but on charity or love, which is a bond of perfect, perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be you thankful. Now listen here. Everybody in this church believing a vindicated word of God and submitting to the doctrine which is passive, looking for that life to come forth, every single person will have that kind of a church, one body. <clears throat> if you sit here, and I've warned you time after time, and you do not become a true part of what I am preaching into, you cannot expect this. You're not going to have it. You're not going to have the Holy Spirit moving in and healing, healing everybody. Little Josh needs healing. Aaron already got his healing, just sitting in a seat. Pete, the same way. If he's sick, it's not what he once had. I, I've challenged any the devils all the way to hell and back. I have my perfect healing. He's got his perfect healing. Pete's got his perfect healing. Let me tell you something. You are in a realm today you never were in. You say, well, Pentecost does the same thing. This didn't come through Pentecost with people. This came through a word. <clears throat> this came through a church where the Spirit of God moves, that sweet Spirit of Christ, bringing forth the manifestation, and we can have it and have it all the time. But it tells you right here, are called in one body. Churches know splits. They know this, they know that. I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a church that never splits because she's already done split away from the splittingest. She's made her split. You know your hearts, brother, sister, and I'm not so stupid. I know them pretty well, too, because I preach this word all the time. Examine your hearts and begin to understand, do you understand vindication? Or is this a catch, a phrase? <clears throat> are you standing on it? Or are you still in some little position where maybe you could just fall over somewhere? You're sitting on a fence. There's no fence anymore. We've turned a corner. <clears throat> Time and eternity is mingled. Do you realize what I'm saying tonight, brother, sister? Although I may be sound rough, I'm preaching very, very kindly to anybody that hears, that hears and on the, hears me on a tape. Actually, I'm trying to tell you, it's all over. If time and eternity is blended, where is your soul now? <clears throat> where are our people? Plead with you young people. Plead with your homes. I'm going to talk more and more about these things that must be brought to light. And you've got to begin doing them. Now, that's an active faith. <clears throat> your passive faith is in a vindicated prophet who could not tell you anything but the truth. It was this one who came down with the whole ring of angels, embodiment of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> brought a vindicated word. And when you truly see that, accepting the truth of the word, and I believe I preach it as Brother Branham preached it, <clears throat> then there must be a product of the life of the word within the vessel. I don't care if it's just an earthen vessel. What's that got to do with it? The same light, brother, sister, that's shining on the earth that brings forth a seed is going to bring forth a body that was brought forth by seed also. And it was a seed of God that brought it forth. Coming in the resurrection, changing our very bodies. This isn't some <clears throat> little hoopla. <clears throat> And I'm going to preach it this way and preach it until it gets a hold of me. Bless God like I wanted to get a hold of me. All right, to the church I say it's God's peace. Not some other peace, but God's peace. That's what I want to bring this morning for the new year. Not looking back. Oh, man, just on page 7. <clears throat> but looking forward, the breaking of a new day. See, 8, number 8, going forward in the millennium. <clears throat> breaking forth in there, see. There is something great lying ahead of us. Over the years, it has been with joy. We've looked forward to it. The pressing, coming of the great light. Now we can see it breaking over the horizon into a realm beyond it, breaking between mortality and immortality. We see it breaking between heaven and earth and from earth, an earth bound with sickness uh, uh, and trouble into a bright shining day of an immortal life 
an immortal body and an immortal earth. That's it. Man, that's it. That's the dissolution. That's white throne and all. Shall never pass away. It's shalom under the church. Now, it's light time. Brother Brown is saying, I'm telling you, shalom. I'm giving you the vindicated word of God that you've got peace concerning these things. Know that time and eternity has blended. You will be a part of the resurrection. You will be a part of the millennium. You will be a part of New Jerusalem. This is it. <clears throat> the seven seals have been opened. <clears throat> Absolutely. He's speaking now. The darkness and chaos of Revelation chapter 3. Wretched, miserable, blind, naked, don't even know it. <clears throat> are coming now, supping with him in order to reign with him. That's what he's talking about. And he said, you can have peace concerning it. See? Absolutely. Where are we at? <clears throat> We're at 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. In a moment, three and I at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound. The dead raised incorruptible. And we're going to put on incorruption, immortality. At that time, death has been conquered. Death, where is your sting? <clears throat> death, where is your victory? You're finished. Brother Brown talked about Paul looking that right in the eye. It didn't mean one thing to him. Just get out of here. Bless God, it was all over as far as he was concerned. William Branham the same way. <clears throat> See? Your brother, sister, listen. That's what faith in the vindicated message does because no other message can do it. Nobody understands 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. If we're wrong, let me tell you this, <clears throat> there is no other explanation except the same dead, dried, old junk they fought over for years. And that's the great, brilliant minds. Oh, it's before the tribulation. Oh, it's in the middle. Oh, it's at the end. <clears throat> oh, there isn't really one until after God. Oh. Forget it. <clears throat> Brother Branham said, Thus saith the Lord, the bride goes before the tribulation. See? <clears throat> Absolutely. Revelation 10, 1 to 7 has taken place. And the word is gone before, before all nations. <clears throat> well, he said to John, You must have go before kings and nations and so on. Brother Branham, what is that? Is that you? He said, No, that's the word. And the word is gone around the world. It's in Russia. It's everywhere. And all the world screamed and said, oh, look out for Russia, look out. Brother Branham said, look out for the church. And now Russia is like a little puppy dog. And he said, don't, don't be afraid of Russia, don't be afraid. <clears throat> we were all afraid. I was some afraid too. said, well, hey, how far can you take it? Now he shows us. So, well, he said, it's good, it's good. We, we, they've got a, a na our name on one of their bombs. I won't be here. It's not my name on the bomb. Roman Catholic Church is on it, too. <clears throat> they'll try to put, they'll pull a double cross. Don't worry. <clears throat> they always have. All right, that's as far as we're going to go, and that's too far. I'm going to leave, leave it at kind of a naughty place here, and I'll see tomorrow morning I can get our thoughts back to where we're going. Time for communion. Let's rise at this time, shall we? <clears throat> Brethren that are going to serve, would you please come forward now? Those are going to play. You come forward right now. <clears throat> We're going to read out of 1 Corinthians. All right. One of my favorite passages here. <clears throat> Paul said, I'm going to deliver to you what the Lord delivered to me. And he did it. He said, the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he given thanks, he broke and said, take, eat this, and my body broke for you. This to remember to me. Now, that's pure and simple what he said, so that's what we do. At the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this, is the, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do is off you drink in remembrance of me. <clears throat> oh. He didn't say in the sense of death in this particular point that death was there. See, the life was shed. So now we look for life, don't we? The broken body signified the blood had run out. The blood signified the life. The life come back upon the believer. Now, for as often you drink, the, eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death that he come. That's exactly right. It's all based upon the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor that. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If he didn't rise, it wouldn't be any good to us. If the Holy Ghost didn't come back, <clears throat> what would have been the use? What would it have been? Come on, look at the Scripture. What's it all about? Just what we're talking about tonight. <clears throat> Made the way. Wherefore, whosoever eats his bread and drinks his cup unworthily, 
See? Not discerning. That's the idea. In an unworthy manner. Cain took the Bible in an unworthy manner. Took the first fruit sacrifice <clears throat> in an unworthy manner. Off the word. Brother Brown said, no man has a right to take this until he's full of the Holy Ghost. And there's no way you're full of the Holy Ghost unless you're piling word upon word. Doesn't come by, by, uh, by feeling anymore. Manifestation. So if I jump around and get you all roasted up like the old Pentecost, they say, well, Brother Bale sure got the Holy Ghost. We had the Holy Ghost. Thank you. You're all wrong. Because at this age, he doesn't lift his voice in the street. He doesn't have to pull things off. He just comes in like a stranger. And if you can recognize the stranger, you're fortunate. He comes and he's gone. And he takes a bride with him. If you can't see that, brother, sister, I'm sorry, but you can take communion. Hey, look, I'm not going to judge you. I'm just telling you wrong. Let me tell you the, the positive side. If you take communion, with that understanding, everything that's in it is yours. Because you see, if he's the entire word. Brother Brandon said every prophet was a part of the word, but he was the entire word. And if this entire word died for us, broke his body, and shed his life for us, and put it back upon us, then, brother, sister, tonight we are entire because perfection has come. The entire word's come back. <clears throat> the full benefit of God is with us. That's why I got Mahina when I thought, my God, they crucified that Son of God afresh. The life poured out, healing for everybody. Now, that one thought gave me healing here. I don't have it elsewhere. Maybe I'm not supposed to. But I just keep saying, Lord, you've had some part of that message. I'll say it or I'll think it, and I'm going to get more. Man, I want more. The fact of the matter is, I need more. If he said, everyone that thirsted come, what about everyone that sick come? Sure thing, see. <clears throat> just stay with me. We'll get there. He's guilty if he doesn't doesn't understand a vindicated message and take with the prophecy. If you've got reservations, brother, sister, about this message, just get over your reservations. Look, I know some things are tough. I have struggled with a lot of things. I, I gave up struggling on the grounds. I say, hey, it's all true. If anything's wrong, it's me looking at it wrong. <clears throat> and you know some of the things that came out of some of these messages, brother Brandon, they're fantastic. I never saw them until I got into it. You never saw them until I taught them to you. So my goodness me, you, you can see what I'm talking about. Just hold in there steady. Vindicated message. Hallelujah. Tell you, how is it vindicated? The life came back. The living God. Examine yourself. Drink of the cup. Otherwise, you get condemned. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Many sleep, many die. <clears throat> what about the hour that it says they don't die? then everybody at a certain time never takes this unworthily. Right? Come on, you get what I said? It says if they take it unworthily, they'd get sick and die. Well, there's coming a time when people will not be sick and they won't die. They're not going to die. Then there's going to be a group of people who take these elements before they get out of here. And the full life and promise of God in each person are getting out of here more. Now, by the grace of God, I believe we're getting somewhere. We're beginning to move up. I feel real good. I don't know about you, but I feel real good. <clears throat> now, because they're off the word, that's where it all starts. Because Brother Branham said adultery is not a sin. It's a symptom or the evidence of sin. Smoking, drinking are not sins. They're attributes or evidences <coughs> of sin, which is unbelief. <coughs> so, all right, you got the same thing here. Now, it says if we judge ourselves, there's only one way you can judge, and that's the judging word. <coughs> Do we say let every man and every thought be alive, but let God be true, and there's only one God vindicated? I'm trying to help you make it easy for you. At the same time, make it easy for myself. 
I don't want to be getting you all easy fight down here and me all hard to fight up here, you know, it's having a terrible time. <clears throat> and I'm not, don't worry. I know what I'm doing, which keep moving. And if you judge yourself, discern. You judge, you judge him faithful. But when we are judged, we're chastened, we're corrected to the Lord, and we're not condemned with the world. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Don't add or take a word now. Stand right there at the scriptural voice. Watch the good things come. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together, tarry one another. What is the main concern? The main concern in this hour is that nobody in this church be off the word. <clears throat> the passive comes before the active. Always before the active. If you don't have the passive, the revelation, you won't know what the rest is. Okay? If any man hunger, in other words, he wants to bring something into here <clears throat> that doesn't belong here. <clears throat> He's not supposed to do it. He's supposed to just absolutely mix nothing with this. Okay. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Talk to him, Norm. Come on up here, son. We're going to pray for you. <clears throat> I saw him sick. I don't like to see little kids sick. It's bad enough when I'm sick and I'm an old man. This time I got sick and died. But there's nothing worse than seeing little, little kids sick. Come on, son. You think I'm big enough to pick you up? Okay, grab a hold of me. Okay, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we've done our best, Lord, as far as the Word's concerned. I might not be the best sounding board you got, the best reflector concerning this word of the last day. But, Father, I believe what I've said concerning the word is there. And there's a full possibility, O oh God, for this boy to be completely healed. Even if I didn't say the truth, there's still a possibility. But, Lord God, because it is true, I'm looking for him to be completely healed and delivered. And, Lord, I believe what's his trouble is the immune system. And, God, there's enough word here to make his immune system perfectly clear because that's the filter. And your spirit, Lord, in that filter to help him. And I believe, Lord, at this time you set him free, O oh God, to be completely whole and delivered. Satan, we say, take your hands off this little child that God dedicated to you. The enemy of his body, whatever it is, cannot have a control because we're dedicating it to the Lord God and Father. We believe the life that's in the word here will take care of every single problem and be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, therefore, Lord, we believe for the healing and pray for that healing and thank you that you help him, that there'll be no more occurrence of this, God, but he be well and other children like him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We love you, buddy. You believe, don't you? You're a good believer. Now you're going to be just fine. That's the way we want it. All right? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you now at this time. Lord God, for the taking of these emblems and for foot washing with just to follow, we ask you, Lord, to bless each one that we may really realize what we're talking about here, that we're not a people, Father, that are any longer far off. There's, that's not it anymore. We are completely nigh unto you because you drew nigh unto us. As the prophet said, the one that's in our midst one day become incarnate to us. And now, Lord, as we, as we <clears throat> have this word here, Lord, you said you were listening for the people that that we're talking to each other. And this is like a conversation, Father, we have in this church where we sort of talk to each other on this great word and then get together and talk it, Lord. And, and so we were counting ourselves now, Father, to be able to come to you in, in the right way, in the right attitude, everything exactly right, partaking. So now there is the only correction we will get is by further revelation of your word and the correction, Lord, in our bodies which will be a greater correction toward that day of immortality when the transforming power of our God is moving in us in a way as it moved way back there in type in Abraham. Father, we're looking for this help according to your word, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Lloyd, are you around here somewhere? <clears throat> Good. We, the si brothers and sisters in here, come on right along here. And then the rest, you can start coming from the back as you usually do. You just move right along. Took a little more time than I really meant to, but I can't help that. Time is all I got.
Turn over number 92 in the hymns of glorious praise. Number 92, lead me to Calvary. Hundred and one, Jesus paid it all.
survey the wondrous cross Sing the last verse. <clears throat> Word. 